I am inviting now Dr. Palani G. Periyasamy to come to a podium to present a speech. Good afternoon to all of you. I think Sampath uh, has given me a great task by assembling the most distinguished people from several countries and within half an hour or 45 minutes, we have to talk about the world economy. It's a very difficult to task, but still, I request every speaker to confine to 10 minutes of uh, 10 minutes to deliver the speech. Before that, uh, since he has already given the introduction to all the people, I don't want to take much of your time. I would like to give you quickly about where we are globally, then they will all pick it up. Uh, before that, I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Sambath for his tireless effort. Everybody has spoken about him. But particularly, when if I were him, I would have been discouraged. But uh, during COVID or post-COVID, he never ceased his uh, tireless effort in assembling all the people from all over the world in order to improve the networking with a view to develop the economy, in particular Tamil Nadu economy. And I, on your behalf, I congratulate him and I thank him for having taken the pains of organizing this 10th conference. Uh, friends, if you look at the world population, I'm going to quickly go through the various elements of what is the situation about the world. Now, if you look at uh, Russia, India, China, and United States, or Germany, and the United Kingdom, our population is next only to, and I think we have exceeded China now. Our population is 143. China is 142.5 crores. And you can see the growth rate. India's population is increasing by 0.81%, whereas China is experiencing a negative growth. Russia is experiencing a negative growth. So also Germany. But United Kingdom and uh, United States and India are really increasing the population. And if you look at the GNP, we lead, we are the third in the world. Uh, United States and China then we come, India comes the third. And you can see it in there. If you look at the growth rate, India is now topping the list. Last year we grew at 6.8%. This year we are going, uh, the prediction is to grow at 7.2%. China is growing at 5.4%. Russia is 3%. And United Kingdom is only 0.5%, but whereas Germany is experiencing a negative growth. This will tell you how the world economies, the leading economies are growing. If you look at the per capita income, that's where I am concerned. Today, we may be the biggest economy. We may be the larger, we have largest population. But I think uh, where we need to improve is our bottom line. We have to improve the poverty level of the people. Uh, we have to work towards elimination of poverty. Poverty eradication should become a very important uh, aspect of our modern governments. And according, if you look at the per capita income, we are still the lowest. And uh, you, I, the figures will tell you very clearly how our per capita income is the lowest among the developing, developed nations. The highest is, of course, United States, Germany, then United Kingdom, so on and so forth. What are the major issues? The major issues are global warming, floods everywhere, because as a consequence of warming, global warming, fire, climatic change, 
immigration, wars, inflation, technology transfer, and crime, introduction of electric cars as a substitute for petroleum, and refugee waves everywhere. If you look at the emerging markets, Africa, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, South America, Myanmar. But challenges are there. What are the elements of challenges? Corruption, political instability, and these countries do not have coherent policy framework. And of course, you know the global disease, that corona, etc., and terrorism. These are the challenges that we have globally today. And global leadership, you look at it, we are now one of the leaders of globally in terms of our influence, the way we influence the events that are happening. India being looked at as an important nation. And I think uh, thanks to our Prime Minister, now in India is looked upon by others as a very, very strong economist in the world. And uh, if you look at the Middle East, uh, then the changing pattern of trade today in the world, there is an absolute transformation of the direction of the trade. Now, China was everywhere, but Chinese trade situation is now on the declining trend. The shrinking market are Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea. Once upon a time, they were the leading people. Now the market for them is shrinking. And of course, you know the world is leaders who shape and shake the world. And our, I am happy to recognize that our Prime Minister Narendra Modi is also a very important personality in the world whose opinion and whose views are very much looked after by other leaders. And of course, the changes that are globally happening are the international organization like IMF, World Bank, UNO, WHO, NATO, European Union. But the problem is all these institutions have become now passive rather than being active. That has an impact on the global economy. What are the trouble spots? Pakistan, Afghanistan, Middle East, and South America. What are the dangers that we have in India? Corruption and regionalism is on the rise, and more segregation than on unification. What are the comfort zones for you to think about having to establish trade or any economic relationship or Scandinavian countries, that is Sydney, uh, Switzerland, Denmark, Netherlands, New Zealand, Australia, and Singapore. These are all the comfort zones for, that we have today. Finally, what I, uh, I am hopeful that the various uh, distinguished personalities who are going to speak to you will address the major issues as I have outlined. One thing that we need to do as Dr. Viswanathan has also indicated, now economy, Indian economy may be improving at a fastest rate possible. It is one of the leading economies in the world. But at the same time, the character, the value, ethics, and the corrupt practices that bring down the image and the efficiency of our country. And that is where we all need to work very hard to avoid the pitfalls which will make our country a great economy in the world. With these words of introduction, I would like to invite one by one to come and speak. I am happy to invite Dr. Velumani, who is the founder of Tyra Care. He is a symbol of success in this country. A person from a small village in Koyamutur went to Bombay with a 
few lakhs of rupees in his pocket. Now he has been a success story. And uh, we are so happy to have him to speak to you today in this August hearing. Thank you.